and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at my impromptu makeshift fox hunt setup here. Uh, I've found out that there is a fox hunt with one of the local clubs. Actually, I've known about it. They've done this uh, every New Year's Day for the last, I don't know, 20, 25 years or something like that. But I have just recently decided I'm going to participate because I realized I had enough stuff here to cobble together a chase vehicle. Now, we probably won't win with this setup, but we'll at least be able to participate and have a little fun. So I'm going to show you guys what I have set up here. Now, like I said, keep in mind this is makeshift and kind of impromptu set up really quick with just materials and stuff ahead laying around here on hand. None of this is exactly the way it probably should be, and none of it's probably going to work exactly the way that we want it to. But like I said, this is more about having fun and, and getting to participate than it is to really eke out a win here. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at what's going on here. So I'm going to go freehand with the camera here. I apologize if it gets a little bit shaky, but the first thing we're going to look at is this homemade Yagi. This is a six-element Yagi that a friend of mine made. He cobbled it together from materials he had laying around and used it at an apartment complex out on his balcony for a little while until he moved and no longer has a balcony. So he's actually been storing this thing here. It's just been sitting outside and I figured why not put it to use for this fox hunt here. You can see there's nothing fancy here. We just have a director over there on that end. This, of course, is the driven element. I've got coax just right on the elements. I don't have any kind of ballon or anything. We're really not going to need that since we're going to be using this just for receive only. And then you can see we've got a bunch of directors there. And then, of course, you can see that I've got that mounted to a piece of PVC pipe with some U-clamps. And then it goes right down into the sunroof of my Tahoe here. You can see that I've taken an old board and cut a hole in it. This board was actually a part of one of those cheap uh, press board Walmart bookshelves that was no longer in use. So I cut a hole in there and we now have an antenna mast sticking through it. And then there's no other thing holding this down other than the friction of the sunroof itself pressing against it and keeping it in place, but it should be fine. Here's how the antenna looks coming in down through the board, through the center of the truck. And then you can see there on the console, I've just got really just a scrap piece of 2x4 with another hole in it to kind of keep the base situated in the console. And I've just got a bungee cord there to hold it for now. Now the other thing that I have set up, and I don't have it shown here because I'm going to take this thing back out in a few minutes and it's kind of a pain in the neck to put in. But I have a couple of bungee cords that go down behind the seat frames and they wrap around the pole and they give it some tension so that when you spin the thing it kind of stays where you point it but you can still spin it by hand. It's not a perfect solution but it again should be good enough for this and was quick and easy to put together here with limited amount of time to do so. Okay and then you should be able to see that I've got a piece of coax running down over here to this wooden box that I made that has some switches on it and this is an attenuator. So the way this is set up is that the antenna just comes in one side and then goes out the other and then inside the box sort of mounted to the front panel there you can see I've got an arrangement of switches and resistors and the way this is supposed to work is that when you engage a switch it cuts the received signal by a certain number of decibels. Now of course the construction back here really isn't the greatest. Again, I'm kind of pressed for time and materials. I don't really have the exact right resistors in here, but I'll give you a quick snapshot here of the rough plan that I worked to. This is something that was printed in the QST magazine back in the 80s. I actually built one of these properly a number of years ago and it worked really well, but I don't know what happened to it. I think I gave it away to somebody or, or maybe I sold it or maybe it went into the dumpster. I'm not sure at this point. But either way, I cobbled together another one with the stuff that I had on hand. So taking a look at the front, you can see I've got three positions. Now, you may have noticed when I had it in the back, the little switch isn't hooked up. And that's because when I started using it, it actually broke and fell apart. So this thing is just dead in here. But these two positions are hooked up. And the way that this works is that this one should cut the signal by about 20 decibels, and this one should cut it by about 15. So obviously the way it works is when the switch is in the out position, the signal should pass through unimpeded, and when it's in the in position, it should be cut by 
roughly 20 or 15 decibels, or the two added together if both switches are active at the same time. So rather than use the radio in the dashboard for the direction finding, I'm gonna use this older HT. So I can use the radio in the dashboard to communicate with the other chasers as the hunt unfolds. So this HT is actually suited well for this purpose. You can see that it's got a signal strength meter with a fair number of bars on it so that we can really get an idea of whether the signal is strong or weak or moving in one direction or the other, so to speak. As you may be able to see, the HT is an old Alinko DJG1. This thing is probably 25 or 30 years old, maybe even older. I picked this thing up at a ham fest not that long ago for only about 10 bucks but it was in great shape and it still works fine. So you may have noticed while we've been looking at the HT that there is a signal present. I'm tuned, I'm currently tuned into a repeater that's 25 or 30 miles west, northwest of here, something like that. And there's been a conversation going on for a while, so this is a good one to kind of use. But I should be able to play with the attenuator box and spin the antenna, and we should see that signal go up and down. And now what I'll do is I'll spin the antenna so that it's 90 degrees to the direction of the repeater. And you can see that depending on kind of where I have the antenna and where I'm currently standing, we can almost null the signal out completely that way. Okay, so that should allow us to take some bearings and figure out a direction to go in to find the fox. So what the attenuator box can do for us is when we get into a situation where the signal is so strong that turning the antenna doesn't really give us a good bearing anymore, what I can do is I can cut the attenuator box in and I'll start with my roughly 15 dB of attenuation. I'll cut that in. You can see the signal drops way down. And now if I spin the antenna, we should be able to get a better idea of what's going on here. Okay, and then you can see here if I flip the other one in, both attenuators add up and we drop the signal completely. Now, of course, being 25 or 30 miles from that repeater, spinning the antenna isn't going to do anything at this point with the attenuation in place. But with both of those in place, if we're only a couple of miles from a strong signal, we should still be able to kind of find a null and take a bearing and go from there. So it looks like the sun has decided to disappear on us, so I'm not sure if this is visible through the backdrop of the trees, but I'll give the antenna a 360 degree spin just so you guys can see what it looks like. So if I'm able to, I'm going to get some footage of the actual fox hunt as it unfolds. And I'll end up making a separate video about that. And then you guys will be able to see this thing in action. And then you'll know how we did in the fox hunt, whether we were able to find the fox or not. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for my impromptu junk box fox hunt setup. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.